Well, that white nationalist rally thrust the city of Charlottesville into the national spotlight. But the debate, the debate over removing Confederate monuments, we know this has been going on for decades. I think it's time for us to have a bit of a history lesson. So I called, or we called, our uh, professor of history, Susanna Ural. Thank you so much, professor, for, for joining us. I know as a historian, you're likely, like many, contemplating how history will remember this period. And I know that this is a point that everybody can agree on. None of us want to get rid of our history. We don't want our history to be forgotten. But I'm curious what your perspective is and maybe what you're, you're, you're talking about as you teach. Do these statues, do they remind us of our history? Or do you think they, they still are, are, I don't know, causing oppressed people to feel further oppressed? I think that's a question of perspective. Um, I think for some people within the community, this is very much a story of their family and their great grandparents and further on back. And for other members of the community, they look at these monuments and see themselves completely erased from the community. So, you know, if, if nothing else, we have this great opportunity to come together as a community with educators to dig into our local past and, and understand when these monuments were raised and why. We've heard some his, uh, some cities are taking uh, what you're saying right there and, and really putting it into action, moving these statues, these monuments to a, 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 a university where they can be studied, used as reacher, research and educate people with them or move to uh, a museum. Is that a move that you support? It is, if that's what the community chooses to do. I don't, I don't think I have the right to go in and tell <laughs> communities what to do. But I think this does need to be a community decision. And I think one of the biggest things is that these monuments need to go somewhere where they can be interpreted. Um, but we need to remember that you probably should have a plan like that in place before you take down the monument. Or we're going to run the risk of memorials and monuments like those in New Orleans that are really still in municipal lots. Um, and I think you're absolutely right. If, if we can find common ground on all sides here, it's that the vast majority of us do not want to erase history. But so it also has proven to us, I think, that not one size fits all. It's not one solution, as you mentioned, for every city. You know, it's interesting to me because when I traveled in uh, Jamaica, I saw... Uh, beautiful uh, tributes to those who fought against slavery, beautiful monuments. And I know those, are, those exist in Africa and around the Caribbean and other places as well. It's interesting to me that we don't see a lot of those, or many at all, in the United States. It is indeed. And this is something that some scholars are calling for in some communities, that maybe what we want to do is rather than take down these monuments, erect some other monuments that really captures the full community experience. Yeah. Well, it's a pleasure to speak to you, Professor of History from the University of Southern Mississippi, uh, Susanna Ural. Thank you so much for joining us and giving your, your wisdom and perspective to us uh, and part of this conversation. Thank you.